Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the part 2 of our little airliner tutorial. Again, at this point I'm assuming that you have a pretty good mastery of how to actually plan out how to get to your destination. Today we're going to take a look at how to bring in all that hard work directly into the simulator. So first things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the finished flight plan. I did make a little boo-boo in the last video and I accidentally selected the wrong version of the Dreamliner. I did go back and correct that, so we should be good to go. So what do we need to know in order to plan our flight? Well, the first one is going to be our critical things like cruise altitude, as well as our weight, which is going to be 29,197. So I'm going to come over to my handy dandy airliner real quickly. I'm going to go ahead and go to weight and balance, and we're going to want to make sure that we're carrying the correct amount of fuel. Again, as you saw just a moment ago, we're carrying a pretty substantial amount. We're carrying a pretty substantial amount, about 29,197. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and figure the math real quick. Uh, 29,197 slash 2. It's going to get us 29,197 slash 2 is about 15,000 pounds per side. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up real quick. 15,000 pounds, go to the next one, 15,000 pounds. Do not put fuel in the center fuel tank unless you absolutely have to. Uh, the reason we don't want to do that is we don't want light wings, heavy center of the plane, because then you tend to snap them off when you do any nasty maneuvers. Next thing we're going to want to take a look at is all of our payload information. So if we scroll all the way down to our flight plan, again, I'm using SimBrief. This is going to be slightly different if you chose to do this over in Little Flight Plan. Scrolling down here real quick, uh, we're interested to see what we have as far as passengers and stuff like that goes. Looks like we're carrying 85.1 tons, and that's going to be kind of the kind of tons that you're probably not familiar with. That basically means 2,000 pounds each. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll make that go away real quick. So we're carrying currently, uh, let's see here, maximum payload, we got 3340. We're going to go ahead and crank on this thing until we're a little bit closer. What do we say, about 81 point, I think it was. Just checking 85.1, going to go ahead and crank that a little bit. And again, you can sit here and play with this quite a bit to like optimize all of this, but I wouldn't worry too much about it as long as you're in the correct center of gravity. And this indicates that uh, we're a pretty heavy plane today. Uh, I'm actually go up to 38%. Eh, that's a little too much, but again, I'm not going to fight each little pound here as I try to get this going. So now we've got all of our fuel loaded, we've got all of our payload loaded, we're pretty much ready to go now. Swing back over on this side of things, and uh, now we need to load our flight plan in. As you recall, when we set this all up, we saved our flight plan. So I'm going to go down here to load save, I'm going to click on the load button, and we're going to be interested in the most recent save for the flight plan that we were working on ourselves. Ah, here it is right here. Press open. Now you give it just a few moments as it sits there and tries to scramble to find our flight plan. And look at this. It did everything we did, just like we planned it. And you can see each one of our little tiny plan points all ready to go. I didn't have to do anything absurd here. One thing we do want to do is we want to make sure that ILS approach is loaded correctly. So we're doing ILS 3.5 right. And now we are good to go. Look at this. It does everything for us. I'm going to go up to nav log. I'm going to go ahead and enter our correct cruise altitude. Now, based on because of the fact we're flying a slightly heavier aircraft, our cruise altitude is going to be a little bit greater. If you take a look right here, you can see that our cruise altitude is going to be tree 50 this time. It is not going to be the tree 700. So come up in here. Beautiful. Okay, press the enter key. By the way, if you take a look at our weather conditions, we have this set to real world weather. Again, we're going to be taking what we got from the real world as well as what we got from the simulator. Now everything is set up and ready to go. All we have to do now is press this button and go ahead and load into the simulator. Before I do that though, we do want to go through the process and have a little bit of fun with this today. So I'm actually going to make sure that I'm at a pretty good spot as far as where I want to be taken off from as far as this aircraft goes. I'm going to select gate 33 because it's so darn close to that runway. Set that one as departure. Give it just a second as this thing freaks out just a teeny tiny bit, trying to figure out exactly what I just did. Of course, what did it do? It deleted my departure from before, which is a little frustrating, but you're going to be running into that problem quite a bit as you're kind of experimenting with some of these different pieces. So we're taking off a runway, let's see here, and just confirming everything real quick. Go back over here. Like I said, there's a lot of pieces to this particular equation here. Go back over to this particular little diagram and go ahead and call my sim brief again. We're going to go take a look at what runway they recommended for us. So again, we'll go ahead and scroll through these little pieces. Scanning, scanning, runway 27 right. Okay, so it's going to be smelts for 27 right. Got it. So we can just come over here, come all the way down to our departure procedure, select the runway we're going to be using. That's not smaky, we're doing smelts. 26 right is actually fine too. Uh, there we go, 27 right, smelts too. And now we are back in good shape again. Everything looks good. Check, 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 check. Altitude check, everything check. All right, let's go ahead and pop over to the simulator and get this thing set up. 
All right, here we are, ready to rock. We're sitting here at our gate F33 here. You can see that's our runway we're gonna be taking off from in just a moment. You can see we have a fully loaded, this is a 78710. This is one of the premium aircraft that you get with the fancier version of Flight Simulator. I decided to pull this one out instead of the Airbus because the Airbus fly-by-wire and I just, we, we just don't get along. That, that's basically what I'm gonna leave it at. All right, let's go ahead and pop inside. Uh, this is uh, definitely quite the office as far as aircraft goes. Again, there's a lot of stuff in here. And you know, in the real world, of course, we have to panic and start thinking about every single one of these little teeny tiny switches. But for today's flight, I'm not really that concerned about it because we're gonna keep it pretty simple. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and flip on the battery. Normally what we'd have to do is we'd have to go up here with flight control and everything like that. We're gonna start getting all sorts of angry warnings all ready to go. What I'm gonna do, of course, is I'm gonna flick on my exterior power. And notice on an, this particular aircraft, our exterior power actually comes in. This is our GPU, by the way, ground power unit. is separate. We have the front and the back all separated. The cool thing about this is because we're working on external power, anything we do electronically with this aircraft, we don't have to worry about uh, causing any issues with everything else. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and reset everything, make sure I'm at the correct barometric pressure, make sure I'm at the correct taxiway. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the um, MFMS set up first. Again, this isn't a full tutorial on this particular aircraft. Craft. We're just taking a look at some of the details. Five. I'm going to make sure my position initiation was correct. Obviously, this is not correct because we're supposed to be starting at not blank. We're actually over here at Atlanta Airport here. I'm going to go ahead and dial that in real quick, make sure this has been preset. There's no penalty if you don't do this. This is just something that comes from the payware aircraft land. Go over to the root page. You'll notice it remembers because we programmed it just a few minutes ago where we're taking off from. It remembers what runway we're starting at. It knows exactly where we're going. I can actually go to the next page if I wanted to get a little fancy here. And you can see every Every single one of my waypoints have been pre-selected, ready to go. I can come over here to perf in it. Now we're gonna have to start thinking about things. Now, if you remember right, cost index is actually a ratio between how much fuel we're burning to get up versus how much fast speed we're gonna go. The lower the cost index, the slower the flight, but the more fuel we save. Now, unfortunately for us, you know, if I sit here and dial in a cost index, it actually works. Now you're probably going, where did this number come from? I mean, wait, 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 what, wait, wait, what, what? So if you actually take a look real quick, Towards the top, there's a whole piece in here that has your cost index ready to go. So if I scroll down, I just gotta find exactly where it was on this particular one. You'll see this thing, this is CI, bingo, CI 15. So this is going to be basically optimizing our cruise speed for us. And if you're curious where that comes from, there's a lot more detail, but again, this would be a five hour video if I tried to go into everything. Go ahead and put that away. I can see that my fuel is correct. My gross weight is correct. My reserves are not set correctly. Our reserve is supposed to be 4.7, but of course we're coming here 4.7, boop. You'll notice we can go ahead and input that. This is going to be our reserve fuel. Now you're probably going, where'd you get that value from Hotshot? Well, if you scroll down a little bit to the fuel section, there's this thing that says thin res, final reserve. That's where we got that value from. Scrolling over here, uh, cruise altitude has been preset for us. Uh, cruise center of gravity looks good. Step size, we're not gonna worry about today. I'm gonna ignore. I'm gonna go to my thrust limit page. This gives me the ability to go ahead and define what thrust I'm using for takeoff and climb. There's no reason in the universe not to use full power for climb. A lot of people will use reduced power or they'll do what they call a flex power for takeoff. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my climb to maximum, set my takeoff to maximum, but I'm going to trick the airplane to think thinking that it's actually really, really, really hot outside. When I do that, the engines will actually use less power, but I'll still have that power available if I need it for later. So you can see I've got everything preset. Go to the takeoff page. Uh, we'll go ahead and set the flaps here normally. Let's say, for example, we want to use uh, flaps 15. I can come in here and type in 15, push the pop button, and nothing changes, which is kind of a bummer, because in the real world, we'd be able to use these values directly. Instead, we got to do this, which is just, oh, so naughty. And now we can see my V2 speed is 139 knots. We need that speed because we're going to come up here. We're actually going to use that 132 knots as a reference speed for us during our takeoff. Come down here and I'll pop up to 132 knots. Whoa, too much, too much. 132. Looks pretty good there. Uh, we're just going to confirm that I did that wrong. Yes, I did. So I'm going to set this up to 139, which is what we're supposed to use as that V2. Again, that's basically our we're going to get going kind of speed. All right, so that's been preset. I can actually put the flaps back up. That's really naughty to be putting the flaps down on an aircraft that we're not supposed to. So the FMS is now all taken care of. I'm pretty much good to go. In the real world, I love pressing the prog button, but oh, we got nothing. So I'm gonna leave it on the legs page. 
Okay, normally what we do, of course, is we call for clearance delivery. We'd ask them quite nicely. So um, the key thing here is they're gonna tell us what our initial altitude is, and our initial altitude is gonna be 14,000 feet. So we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna go ahead and dial that into 14,000 feet, and I am basically ready to rock. Next thing I like to do, of course, is I reach above my head and slap on the APU, get this thing rolling, and I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect everybody else once we know that the APU is rolling properly. Again, one thing that you can do in here is um, everybody takes some time. They always like to set their page up and get it just the way they want it. And some people change the center mode. Some people do top down mode. Everybody kind of has their own way of kind of getting everything set up in this particular aircraft. I'm not going to recommend one way or another, but what I'm going to say is turn in your flight director because you're going to need it. All right, next thing you want to do is you want to set your heading to go ahead and face the direction that you're going to be taking off into. Again, now we're taking off on, I believe it's going to be over in this direction. It's about this heading right here. It looks pretty good to me. Everything else is looking good. Auto throttle is armed. MFD is selected. APU by now should be nice and spun up to full speed. We're going to go ahead and disconnect the external power. We don't need it anymore. And now we're basically ready to get this thing rolling. I'm going to go ahead and slap on my beacon to let everybody know I'm about to get started. Slap on my navigation light to let everybody go get started. Now I'm going to instruct the person next to me to go ahead and uh, get us going backwards. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out my parking brake. And the pushback truck is going to come by and uh, give us a little bit of a tug here. And make sure the parking brake is disengaged. I'm not holding the brake brake. And we are on our way. Time to get the engines started. What an easy aircraft to start, by the way. I'm going to climb up here. I'm going to make sure my fuel pumps are on. We don't need any center pumps here today because that's simply just not required. And all we do is come up here and slap the thing into the start position. We're going to watch our RPM once we get it over about 15. We're going to go ahead and slap the fuel on. Again, I've got the autopilot doing all the radio work for me here today, so I can just concentrate on operating the plane. There we go. Fuel on. And when this gets up to 20, you're going to suddenly watch the EGT spike like you've never seen it spike before as the spark starts. Look out the window for a moment, make sure everything looks okay. Getting a nice little push. Hopefully she doesn't send us into the next area code. Oh, there it goes. will pop to the outside view. Um, they got to stop pushing us back before we ran into the wall there. Atlanta ground red 6-4 requesting the end of pushback. Red 6-4. <laughs> that was a little close. <laughs> um, yeah, about that pushback. That was a little reckless. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to go ahead and slap the parking brake on as he gets out of our way. All right, we got one engine started. We always start with the right engine first. I'm going to go above my head and go ahead and get the left engine started as well. Same exact procedure. We're going to get this thing spooling up to about 25% and one and two, and then we're going to go ahead and slap it into the run position. Again, this isn't a full tutorial on the 787. This is just kind of how you would have to go through this. Again, once the FMS is set up, I basically have nothing to do for this flight. Once we get this thing rolling, it's just go kind of a thing. Not really a lot to it. All right, stand by to set the engine to run. And that looks pretty good to me. This one now, we've signaled the computer. You may now apply fuel directly to the engine when it feels appropriate to do so. Atlanta ground red. Go ahead and make sure this thing's all set up. And away it goes. Delightful. Obviously, don't be hitting the gas yet because uh, we haven't done much yet. And he's going to disappear. we got to take a left and a left. And we're going to line ourselves up right down here, which isn't too, too bad of a flight. Wait till that engine gets all nice and neatly spooled up. I'm going to confirm that everything else makes sense. Again, this is the kind of aircraft that unless it's a red light, you don't have to worry about it too much. I'm just kind of hoping this switch would click itself out before we get rolling. Again, we're not going to be on external power here. Well, by the way, if you don't turn on the cabin power, you're not going to get any coffee from the flight attendants. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind whenever you're planning. Now, normally if this were the rear airliner, we'd be fitting with this panel over here for things like pressurization. But we just don't have to worry about it too much. All right, I noticed my start switch is canceled. It's time to go ahead and disengage the APU. The real world, the APU slows, it shuts itself out slowly. Okay, after we've gotten all that ready to go, normally what we do is we go ahead and just top on just kind of our nose light here, which is going to act as our little taxi light. I'm going to go ahead and release my parking brake, and we're just going to get this thing kind of rolling nice and gently. Now, one really neat thing on this aircraft is we have a hugs, which is this. It's a little heads-up display. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, now, of course, we have a little bit of frame rate issues. Um, interestingly enough, this computer, this is an i9-10850K, and it has a 3080 super clocked, and this is the frame rate I get with this aircraft. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head, too. So I've also reduced the resolution of those two displays down there to try to improve it a little bit, but it still does not want to take the edge off of it. Normally, I get like 150, 170, quite a few frames. Oh, somebody's coming in for a landing. All right, let's do it to it. 
Coming in. Um, you might want to put your landing gear down, Chief. Oh, apparently he puts his landing gear down at the last second. What is this? The space shuttle? Jeez. We're going to take a look out for any traffic, because we do have real-world real world traffic on turned on today. Got to keep things interesting for us. It's pretty good. Now, I actually like this aircraft over the 747. The 747 is too much airplane. But one thing I don't like is the front wheels on all the airliners in this version of Flight Simulator are just a little wonky. And there we go. Go ahead and line us back up at the road here. Of course, I know it's a taxiway. It's not a road. All right, go ahead and get us rolling. Looks pretty good. You have all of your electronics down here, which work pretty solid. Everything looks good. It looks like my co-pilot has done a wonderful job of setting up all of my transponder information. I'm basically good to go. Go count. Bump, 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 bump. All right, crossing the critical ILS point, which is this line right here. Go ahead and look out the window real quick. I can feel, me, feel myself slowing down a little bit. We're just going to basically go to the end and take a good old-fashioned right turn there. Go ahead and confirm some things electronically. We want to make sure our flaps are in the correct position. Go ahead and activate the toga button when we need it. Good. Auto throttle is good. LNAV and VNAV. We'll go ahead and activate those once we get over to the runway. Again, like I said, this isn't a tutorial video for this particular aircraft. This is just for airline flights in general. Just so you can see just how much goes into it. Line ourselves up quite neatly with that handy dandy little yellow line right there. Looks pretty good to me. Hold the brakes. Normally we would want, oh, we got somebody on approach. So I might have to kind of wait a second here before I go charging onto the runway like I always do. All right, nice and gentle turn. All right, we want to stop before crossing that line just in case he is using 2-7 right today. See all that heavy, busy traffic right outside of Atlanta. Always super busy here. And looking pretty darn good. We want to start before we get to that line. Delightful. All right, let's look out the window, see how things are going. Runway, two, seven, yep, another guy coming in without his landing gear, isn't he? No, he's got him down this time. All right, now all we have to do is ask permission for takeoff. We've just been cleared for 27 right. Awesome. So let's go ahead and scroll on to the runway here. Parking brake is off. We're going to go flap on the landing lines real quickly. Seven right, red, six, four. Make sure our flaps are down. We're just going to kind of do a mental checklist here. We want to make sure we arm our rejected takeoff brake, just in case we have to let go of the gas in an emergency, like we get cut off by an AI or something like that. Go ahead and line ourselves up here. And this is one of the things I love and hate about airliners. Oh, that front wheel is just irritating. All right, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. All right, we're set. Not perfectly lined up, but again, that front wheel is just giving me crazy issues in this version of Flight Simulator. All right, normally what we do, of course, is we press the clock button to get us rolling. I'm going to turn on LNAV and VNAV. You don't have to. I'm going to reach behind the throttle. I'm going to press the toga button. Off we go. <laughs> I love the engines on this thing. Now notice this aircraft automatically knew that we needed to use exactly that amount of thrust that we dialed in just a few minutes ago. So we're going to keep accelerating down the runway. Once we get to about 140 knots, we're going to gently pull back on the control bar. Aircraft is going to go up. As soon as we have a positive rate, we're going to slap the landing gear into the up position. Don't touch the flap control just yet. Now we're going to be using our noise abatement procedure. Again, it totally depends on what you have for this particular situation. The reason I'm getting a really big angry warning light right now is on account of the fact that I'm still very, very low. And my landing gear are not down yet. All right, I'm going to gently start milking the flaps up. Again, I'm not putting my hand on the throttle at any point here. I simply don't need to for this particular one, flight. Two, one decimal, See, we're drifting two, just five, a little bit. That kind of thing happens. I'm going to go ahead now that we're 500 feet above the ground. I'm going to press the autopilot button now. Go ahead and bring up the next notch of flaps. You've got to monitor this autopilot. It loves to sink on you. Looks good. Looks good. Next click up. Again, we're just following these little cues. You can see our next notch of flaps is going to come right there. And then our last notch of flaps is going to come when we cross this line right here. All right, we got this thing rolling quite nicely, and we're just about ready to bring up that last notch of flaps. Now keep in mind, the autopilot is engaged at this time. And we are out of flaps. Our landing gear is up. We are clear. 
Now the aircraft is completely under control of the automatic pilot until my wheels touch the ground. At any point, of course, I could take over, which is something I do quite a bit often. Now, generally when you're flying airliners, there's a couple rules that you're gonna wanna kinda of follow depending on, again, if you're doing this for fun, if you're doing this to be serious, if you're doing this for all sorts of different reasons. But generally, you don't say anything and you don't do anything crazy until your aircraft has climbed beyond the point where it can uh, safely go ahead and navigate on its own. So usually that works out to be about 10,000 feet. Take a look around, making sure everything else looks good, confirming that our legs look good. Looks pretty good. Back to the root page. I'm going to go down to the next page. All right, we're proceeding to Rexford's Law. At any point, of course, I can go ahead and navigate the aircraft over on my own. Going to one tree. Do one of these kind of things. Like if I'm noticing, I'm kind of drifting a little bit outside. So I'm going to flip on heading select, and the aircraft will start swinging itself over to the left on its own. We're just going to kind of manually grab that waypoint and just kind of cruise along. You've got to be really careful with waypoints that you import out of other flight simulator programs or flight planning programs. It's because they're always going to give you a few different issues depending on what's going on. All right, there's 10,000 feet. Now we're gonna go ahead and shut off all of our landing lights at this time. We don't need our landing lights to be working because again, we're gonna be working these things pretty well on our own. All right, that's all set. And now the aircraft's pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and flip on the, bring our aircraft a little bit more to the left. Gonna line us up at that new point. Automatic banking mode, I'm gonna put it on auto. I don't need to do anything excessive here. Then we go ahead and flap on the LNAV and I'll basically I'll meet you when we get to the top of the climb. Okay, we're just about to the top of the climb now. Uh, that was a pretty good length of climb. I'm just taking a look at my kind of lapse time. You can see I'm hitting the 27-minute mark so far. Remember, that's the total time, though. That includes the 10 minutes it took us to actually get this thing rolling up to the runway. We're crossing about 35,000 feet. That's uh, flight level 350. And you can see we've got some beautiful clouds kind of hanging out the front of the aircraft. We can see the whole state of Georgia basically below us. I'll uh, take a look around at our systems. Everything seems to be working okay. Our autopilot's on, again, lateral navigation mode. is on vertical navigation mode. Everything is basically ready to go. Now, one trick that I really, really like about this aircraft is the fact that I can go to map mode and I can actually zoom out so far that you can literally see when the aircraft has to start coming down on its own. It'll actually mark it with a little uh, logo on the side of it so you know you can come down. Now, this is not a tremendously long flight. Basically, we're going to get ourselves all the way over to Hakuna Makata. And if you actually come down here, it will actually tell you the flights that you altitude that you need to be at when you get to those particular points. So until we hit this OTK, this Oscar Tango Kilo waypoint, we actually don't really have to worry about descending this aircraft for that long. So one of the things I really wish is that we had the prog button working here and it would tell us exactly what our estimated times are for a whole flight. The nice thing is once we do get up to altitudes like this, there's really not a heck of a lot to do. Generally what we'd have to do is continue working with air traffic control. Something I uh, you know, let my little buddy over here on the right, uh, she's kind of visible right here, but you'll trust me, she's there, she's there. And they'll be talking to air traffic control, they'll be handling all the different transitions and everything. And basically we're just gonna keep on cruising here until we go ahead and get a call from air traffic control notifying us that it's time to go ahead and be Begin our descent down to MCL. Remember, total flight time here is about an hour, but I'm not going to make you sit through all of it. Another job you want to be doing as we're flying is we always want to be double checking our different systems, making sure everything's kind of behaving the way it should. Again, we can go to systems page, you know, you can come up here, how my electrical is working. But as you can see, most of this is not that detailed. Currently, we're holding about 30,000 pounds of fuel, so we really did not use much during that climb. Pressurization would be in here. Of course, we'd have information about everything else. But again, none of these work, unfortunately. So a lot of what I call it, kind of my homework. Work. It just isn't a thing on this particular aircraft. Now that's a good thing, that's a bad thing, it's a good thing, it's a bad thing. It really depends on you and kind of like what you want to do. Notice I don't have my CDU, I don't have my info, but I can press ND and flip that back on. I could also leave it on system page, leave it on the fuel here, and go ahead and I'll leave this view back as my kind of navigational display so I can keep track of how everything's going. Keep in mind, any controls on this side, you have to actually push there. There's actually a neat little menu here that you can actually go ahead and turn on terrain as well as weather. I can actually flip on the weather radar there, I'll go ahead and leave that on. Generally, what I do when it comes to range is I leave the one here on the right set to about 80 and usually leave the one on the left here set to about 40. You can see there's some really serious looking weather out ahead of us which doesn't surprise me it's starting to get to be the afternoon over in Florida and of course during the afternoon and whenever it's warm you always get thunderstorms that's kind of the nature of the beast. Of course I can come up here and flip this over to terrain mode you're not going to see much here because of the fact that there is no terrain at 35,000 feet. Now one of the things you're probably worried about is when do we have to start bringing the airplane back down? 
The good news is air traffic control is going to let us know when we have to start descending. In which case, we just got a call asking us to go down to 27,000 feet. So in this case, I'm actually just going to dial in 27,000. I'm going to order up a flight level change. I'm going to go ahead and back the throttle out myself. Shut off the automatic throttle for just a second because it's being kind of naughty. And we're just going to go ahead and let the plane gently come down on its own. Again, you always want to be paying attention to what air traffic control asks you to do. It's going to be constantly giving you different things for different types of flights. You just want to be very, very mindful of that when you're doing your travels. Now, if you're flying on VATSIM or something like that, this is a completely different experience. You are at the mercy of those controllers. And that is going to be for a very other day. So what I'll do is I'll continue flying this. Uh, right when we get to the point where we're going to start descending with the aircraft, I'll go ahead and I'll meet you up and again. But other than that, uh, I'll see you in a moment. All right, we've just been given our clearance to go ahead and drop down to flight level 260. Notice, however, we've been given this instruction via ATC, not based on our LNAV and VNAV. So unfortunately, we're going to have to make our own way down. So to do that in this particular craft, the method I like to use is a flight level change. Go ahead and disable automatic throttle. I'm going to pull the throttle all the way down to zero. Go ahead and let that kind of close out for this particular point. And we're going to start our descent now all the way down to our destination. Now, a couple interesting things here is if you've actually taken a moment to go ahead and take a look at our actual approach plan. I've been studying this pretty hardcore myself. It says we're supposed to be crossing the waypoint that we just crossed a moment ago at about 290, which actually is fairly accurate. But we also notice when we cross Matata, which, heh, <laughs> Hakuna Matata, what a wonderful word. We're going to be looking for exactly 25,000 feet. So it's uh, kind of interesting to compare the uh, reality versus what the flight simulator actually has offered us up. So we're going to shut that down here. And now we begin our descent. Coming down to my legs page, I've noticed that their version of Matata expects flight level 350. So this is still basically treating it as if it's our cruise altitude. So that's why we had to override it. Now you're probably wondering, why did I do the flight level change versus vertical speed? Well, the advantage here is I can cut the throttle to zero and this plane will try to keep the same airspeed all the way down to that specific altitude that we just dialed in. This is a great time, by the way, to go ahead and grab the hugs and pull that sucker down. This is not a complete hugs, unfortunately. We're missing quite a few little features on it, which kind of makes it complete, but it's more than enough information to provide us with a nice, safe landing. You can see we're starting to nose over just a teeny tiny bit. Now, a few of you are probably going, well, what if we wanted to get down to that altitude in a hurry? Well, there is a way to do that. On our aircraft, we have this handy dandy spree brake lever. Again, this isn't a tutorial for this aircraft, and generally I don't recommend pulling this handle. But if we were to pull this back and leave our throttle at zero and leave flight level change mode on, we'd basically fall out of the sky. But the reality is, my vertical speed right now is 4,300 feet per minute, which is a tremendously quick vertical speed. Again, thank God this aircraft is pressurized, or that'd be tremendously uncomfortable for our passengers. So we're just gonna basically proceed all the way down. I'll be going through each and every one of these steps. I'm just going to take a quick peek. Basically, we're going to go Jasmine, Jafar, Rafiki, Twona, Drex, Spider, Waven, and I'll pick you up right when we get to Waven. All right, uh, many, many minutes of descent later, and uh, here we are just about in the 5,000 foot point at Waven. Next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go ahead and have the computer calculate our approach speed. So I'm going to go over to init ref real quick, go down to the approach option, then I simply select my flaps. We're going to be using flaps 30. I go ahead and click on it normally, but unfortunately the way this one works is it's kind of tricky. You have to type it in by hand. So I'm just going to be typing one, whoop, clear, clear, clear. I'm going to type in 158 slash, because remember you want to add five knots to your speed. Again, slightly advanced, but that's all right. We're going to do 30. Oh, I'm sorry, I got it backwards. I've done that a million times. I'm going to type in the degrees of flaps we're going to use, slash, and then I'm going to use the speed that we're going to be approaching at. So I'm going to come over here to flap speed and go ahead and click that button real quickly. And you can see everything is ready to go. We're going relatively slow at this particular point. We're just about getting ready to land here. Uh, it's just asked us to come all the way down to 5,000 feet. I've got manual throttle on right now. Normally what you could do is you could come up here and press the AT button and go ahead and set the speed. But unfortunately at this time, they still have not fixed this bug, which is a quite Quite frustrating, but again, they'll fix it eventually, I'm sure. So I'm gonna get myself right about 240 knots here. Again, I have to do this by hand because of the fact that this is basically busted. That's just not how that works. Of course, you're probably going, well, can't you just press the VNAV button and have that take over? 
Well, if I were to do that, if you actually take a look at where we are now, it would basically hold me at that speed and do a okay job, but it would descend before we're supposed to be descending. You know, during this entire approach procedure that we're setting up right now, we're supposed to be doing everything in a very specific order. So basically our landing position is gonna be right up here on the left, and you know, we're gonna get a pretty nice little look of how incredibly flat Florida is. On our way down, by the way, we did go ahead and flip on our landing lights and get everything nice and ready to go. Uh, at this point, like I said, we're about an hour 13 time. Remember, we were looking at a total block time of about an hour and 18 minutes. So you can see that our calculations were actually extremely good. And you can see we're gonna be landing in just a few minutes. You know, this is a good time to go ahead and get on the intercom and kind of make that call, let everybody know, hey, we're about to land the plane. And uh, you know, make sure those tray tables are in the right position and everything else. Uh, one interesting thing I noted about this flight, by the way, and I just wanna share this real quickly. And I'm sure this is another one of those things they're gonna fix later, is we barely burnt any fuel at all during this entire journey, which is uh, kind of scary if you think about it. I know this aircraft is fuel efficient. I don't think it's that fuel efficient, but again, I don't know enough about the airplane to be able to speak to that directly. So basically what we're doing is we're taking our base leg here. We're gonna come on nice and wide and we're gonna to try to line ourselves up here and then switch on to the approach hold to go ahead and bring ourselves all the way down to the ground. Now, one thing I am gonna do, which I'm just gonna quickly do real fast is I'm gonna set us to heading hold mode. I'm actually gonna disengage lateral navigation real quick because I wanna line myself up a little bit nicer with where we are. Speaking of lining ourselves up, this is our actual approach that we're gonna be doing. You can see at cruise, we're supposed to be at an altitude of 5,000 feet, which you are right now. We're basically gonna take a gentle left directly across cruise and then proceed down on a normal approach. Now, one of the great things about this aircraft is the FMS has already preloaded my navigation frequencies. You know, if I came down here, you know, I've got all my VHF and HF and all that stuff. We don't even need to worry about this because the computer will automatically in the nav rad page load in the appropriate ILS frequency for us, which is 111.15. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and change my zoom a little bit here because we're gonna to have to take that left turn now. Shut off heading hold mode, heading select mode on. I'm gonna go ahead and take that aggressive left turn here and then we're pretty much ready to land this plane. We're gonna, that came a little bit wider than I was hoping it was, but I'm not complaining about too much. We're gonna go ahead and slow down and start getting this aircraft ready for landing. Bring us down to a few more feet. Remember, we're looking for about, whoa. I'm sure you'll do that about a thousand times with your mouse also. Come down a little bit faster. That's a pretty good speed right there, about 210. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Go give us a little bit more power. We only need to go less than 210, however. Swing this aircraft a little on the wide side, but unfortunately, air traffic control was very slow in giving me approach to it. They just gave me the 4,000 feet after we crossed the waypoint. Again, those kind of things aren't perfect yet, but they're going to be more than good enough for us. Go we'll grab the hugs, flap that down. I'm going to go ahead and disable the automatic pilot real quickly. And this is a fly-by-wire plane, so uh, once you do certain things with it, it'll start fighting a little bit. But I'd rather have that in this particular case because I want to get ourselves nice and lined up here. Again, sometimes it helps to kind of grab manual controls. Oh, you can see the automatic, the fly-by-wire is pushing me back to where I need to be, but that's okay. That's looking pretty good right there. They really need to adjust the brightness of that heads-up display. You can barely see a thing. Looking pretty good. All right, now we're just going to gently come on down on our own. <laughs> see how they're trying to step us down each individual position here. I'm going to go ahead and arm the approach. Keep in mind, automatic pilot is still off. We're getting a little high. I'm going to go ahead and push the nose down here. Go ahead and bring in our landing gear as well. I'm going to go ahead and set up my automatic brakes. So auto four. Nose down. Next now to flaps. Flaps on this thing are extremely aggressive. And once we're realigned with the runway, I'm going to go ahead and start taking that gentle turn. And you can see we're just about on glide slope again. You can look directly out the heads-up display and actually see those little diagram markers starting to indicate exactly where we are. Swinging around nice and gently, and there is our runway, just like we anticipated. We're still a little on the high side, we're still a little fast, but nothing too, too scary at this particular point. This is a pretty reliable aircraft, so I'm not too concerned with it. Yeah, and continue bringing us down just a little bit. And now we are back in business. Go ahead and line myself up a little bit. Bring the next natural flaps down. Automatic pilot is back on. You can see we are lined up with the glide slope as well as that. You'd never in the real world do an approach that sloppy. That's kind of messy for anybody. 
Next notch of flaps looks pretty good. Look how many notches of flaps this thing has. Jeez. Miles. South inbound ILS runway three five right approach. Okay, I'm noticing that the approach autopilot did not arm. Disengage any autopilot. Runway three five right approach. Altimeter three zero decimal one five wind calm. All right. Looks like we're going to have to do this one by hand. Again, this is going to be a common battle you're always going to be facing with these aircraft, at least at this time. Remember, we're barely into December. The game is not even three months old at this particular point. So you're going to be constantly running into things. And obviously, when they start bringing in all sorts of crazy payware options, you're going to start seeing a lot of solutions to this directly. Again, I armed approach mode. There it goes. Of course, now we're way too high. But that's okay. Nose down a little bit. And now we're back in business again. Sweet. Slightly off to the right. We're still far too high for this landing, but that's okay. We're not actually landing on the taxiway here. We're landing on that teeny, teeny, tiny little concrete strip to the right of it. We actually need to come to the right some more. No trim on this aircraft. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. I'm gonna check something real fast as I'm getting lined up. Looks good. And we are all set. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the flight path vector on this particular version of this aircraft, which is really kind of a bummer because you could put that little circle basically right there at the end of the runway, and you could just go ahead and bring this thing down on its own. All right, unfortunately, we will not be able to see Disney World from our approach here, which is kind of a bummer at the same time as you can always check it out on your own also. Checking everything, uh, gas is in position, we've got flaps down, gear down, everything is looking good. We are definitely on the slow side, but I'm kind of feeling the aircraft out, and I've got a lot of lift left, even though it's telling my approach speed should be significantly higher. Again, this is something you'd want to confirm on a chart before you'd actually do ahead, go ahead and land the plane normally. Yeah, see how far down my nose is, despite the fact that I seem to be completely in the red with speed? That is indicative of being a situation where I'm going much too fast for this particular approach. All right, lift the nose back up a little bit. Let's see if I can cancel that out a bit. No, still coming in. Feels awfully slow, but uh, realistically, we are not going slow at all. We're actually going at a pretty good speed. All right, we want about a three degree approach. You can see we have a pretty aggressive crosswind from the left there. I'm having to fly the aircraft fairly sideways. I love the fact that there's that little road right there that kind of lines up at the end of the runway. Like you never get so spoiled with things like that normally. Oh yeah, that's a very significant crosswind. Our aircraft should be basically level on this approach, and I'm still having to push the nose down just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit in order to keep this nice and reliable. I'm just gonna do a quick visual check of the aircraft, making sure everything's the way I want it to be. Looks good. Speed brakes aren't out or anything silly like that. I know that we're a little on the low side now. I'm gonna pull the nose up just a tiny bit. Not too much, not too much. Because again, with airliners, generally what you're gonna be doing is playing with the throttle more than anything on approach. We're still a little off to the right here, but again, there's a very strong wind. All right, I'm seeing one white and three red, which means we're low. My glide slope indicates that I'm actually pretty much right on. I still have a lot of lift left, but that crosswind is really starting to take me here. Of course, after a flight like this, you'd expect uh, things to be pretty good, but you never know. All right, stand by for the optical illusions. All right, we're crabbing the plane fairly aggressively. This is not a Cessna 172. You can't just crab it and hope everything works. All right, getting down. Don't do anything silly yet. All right, over the runway. Feel the throttle. Lift the nose up just a tiny tiny bit. Don't pull back too hard. And we are down. Nice. Go ahead and slap on the reversers. Quick with your feet. Speed brakes out. And we have reached our destination. All right, hopefully this video is helpful as far as uh, showing you some of the details of a uh, flying airliner stuff. Obviously, we had a little bit of trouble with the automatic pilot at the end there, but that is just something that has not gone away, no matter how much I've kind of played with it. Hopefully, over time, a lot of that will impress, uh, to improve, I should say, not impress. I wish it impressed me. And of course, as we start seeing crazy payware aircraft, this is probably going to be very moot. But at the very least, you can see kind of how to get, take your flight plan, put it together, load it into the aircraft, and then get everything going together. Enjoy.